it goes down and it basically, it almost wants to die. Welcome back to Little Mythic Classic. And I just grabbed this car from down in storage, the customer car, and it's finally time for a Series 3 XJ6 here on the channel. So Series 3 XJ6 is probably the most popular series, I think. Most people seem to be that this is the one they want, either this one or Series 1. These still make really good dailies, because in my opinion, they're quite modern with fuel injection, all of that. This is a 4.2, so they're fuel injected. And it's a US spec car, recently imported. You can see that from the bumpers, the headlights, and a couple other things. So what does it need? Well, it needs a couple things. It does run and drive. It is inspected. It drove here. However, it does have some characteristic issues that these cars usually have. It has a rough idle in gear when warm. So that is a pretty common thing. So we're going to have to try and solve that and a few other things. But that's what we're going to focus on in today's video. I just drove it here maybe half an hour ago just from storage down there. So it's definitely not warm. Let's just fire it up and I'll show you guys how dead smooth it is cold. It is just incredible how, how nice it runs. And then, you know, once it warms up a little bit, it's not that smooth at all. The owner actually usually pops it into neutral when it does that because especially if it's at like a red light because he doesn't want it to uh, stall on him so yeah it's pretty bad let me get there we go and are we not in park there we go that is a good quirk of the xj6 if you want to prime the fuel pump because on xj12 when you turn the key to on you hear the fuel pump prime not on the six cylinder if you want to do that you need to put it in the gear and then turn it to the start position and that will prime the system which can be a good thing to do if it's been sitting for a long time or if you just want to see if your fuel system holds pressure or not but as you see it is dead smooth at 1100 rpms Give it about five minutes or so, and uh, it is going to uh, definitely change. So uh, I'll leave it running here, and in a second or so, you guys will see what I mean by it running rough. It's been about three minutes, and as you can clearly hear, it's misfiring or running rough. Hasn't gone up the temperature yet, but the idle's coming down. Du, 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 du. It's missing. And you can clearly see now the whole engine is shaking. So what we're going to do is step one. I think it could either be ignition related or it could be you know, a vacuum leak or something with for all the body and all of that. We'll drive into the workshop. I've grabbed a couple of spare coils I have laying around. So we'll just quickly put another coil on it and see if that makes a difference. And we can sort of rule that out. I mean, it almost sounds like it's gonna stall now. It doesn't stall, but it's just, yeah, it is not that happy. But let me drive into the workshop. We'll swap out the coil and see if that makes a difference. Have a look at the idling gear, and especially if it gives some throttle, like if I wanna go up the hill, something like that. It goes down and it basically, it almost wants to die. So we do have a major issue, but let's try up the coil. Got the coil disconnected here. I'm just going to connect up this coil, which has the correct homage for this ignition system. Should work. And it is a known good coil so that's also a bonus where did my socket go there we go 
The Series 3 is, um, it's a very nice car. Um, redesigned by Pina Farina. It's a bit more updated, feels a bit more modern. Um, just ventilation system, windows, everything is just a little bit more modern than a Series 2. And fuel injection is definitely a good thing on them. Usually really, really reliable, just some small things to have a look at, but nothing really, really serious. Let me just double check the polarity of all of this. There's a positive there and negative there. That's also one thing we can't check later, just make sure that's actually connected correctly because a coil will run in reverse, but it will produce a weak spark. This could also be something we can have a look at. But yeah, uh, good engines, all that. There's a lot of information out on the forums on these because when they were 15, 20 years old, there were still a lot of people dailying these. And that was sort of the heyday of the internet forum. So a ton of information on these online, which is really good if you own one. Let's see if it runs on this one and we'll see if it makes a difference. If not, we're going to have to dig into other things. Let's see if it makes a difference. Shouldn't have to get into it to fire it up. Did go up in idle. It wasn't that long, it was turned off, so I don't think it has really cooled down anything. It's definitely smoother. Let's see. Okay, that misfire is cleared. Tiny bit of it, but really not as bad as before. So maybe it was a two part thing. Maybe it is ignition and something else. But let's just have it run a little bit longer on this coil and see what happens. Nah, it's not better. It's well, it's a tiny bit, but it's not good. Perhaps well. And then when it settles down there. It does have that typical uneven idle. Let me hook the other coil back up, the old one back up, and we'll see. I'll try to be a little bit quicker about it, and we'll see if it's worse than or the same. I've tried a lot of things and nothing has really made it better. The interesting thing is, I mean, I turned this off 30 seconds ago. It will be smooth when it starts up, even from hot, for about a minute or so, and then it will be uneven again. It's not, it does have issues with the park switch, so. Come on. See, and it will just go out of it. See, see, that it's smooth and it will fall down. So, because of that, I tried a couple things. First, you saw me spray the intake and everything with starting fluid, looking for leaks. There are no leaks around that elbow or anything there because you don't want any unmetered air coming after the airflow sensor. I took vice grips and I crimped off um, that fuel line, which is for the cold start injector, because if that's leaking, 
that could give the symptoms we're having whereas uh, it will run fine and then as that slowly drips down it will just be too rich i also tried unplugging the o2 sensor just seeing if that did anything it makes no difference um so a little bit stumped at the moment i am going to think about this a little bit and uh we'll be back we'll probably have to check down there just make sure it's not completely gummed up inside the throttle body but i don't think that's the issue i've done a couple more tests off camera and i still have the same result it runs pretty much the same one thing i did was to make sure i don't have a bad coolant temp sensor is i just bypassed it and if you short circuit it um, it will think the engine is full operating temperature that made no difference so i think we'll let this cool down i'll come out later tonight we'll pull the plugs to see what they look like i think this thing's very rich so we'll see if they're all sooty then we'll open up here we'll clean that out if it's very dirty we'll check the gap in there and if that is all good we'll button everything back up next time we run it we'll, we'll check ignition time we make sure it's pretty much okay thing is i want to start fixing things before we throw parts at it because uh, that's no way to fix something we'll do that and then if we still need to do some things we could adjust the idle speed a little bit and go from there a little bit investigating later and we found out a couple things i'm going to share with you guys have the plugs out some throttle body things but one thing i've definitely found out is the previous person who worked on these or at least who worked on the ignition system was not a jag mechanic because well first of all they numbered spot plug wires and they've numbered them incorrectly an xk engine as we all know in cylinder one is at the back cylinder six is at the front but they wrote cylinder six here and one there so probably just a mechanic is used to a regular straight six uh these are backwards but uh, not really a big deal but it's always fun when you find little clues like that also the plugs are not uh the ones specified for this engine so that's also a thing cylinder one two and three have been burning a little bit of oil we can see that especially on this plug if you see the amount of deposit right there compared to something from here which doesn't have any deposit on it they're all running a little bit rich that's what i wanted to see because it felt like the car was running rich also down here i was expecting this to look a lot worse this looks pretty nice and clean and i have checked with a feeler gauge two thousands of an inch and it fits perfectly in there so it's correctly adjusted as well the reason i was thinking it might be misadjusted is just because the owner has another complaint with this car that he feels like it takes a long time to get in the third and then i was thinking it could be the kick down cable here could be misadjusted we're going to check the adjustment of that as well uh, but that could be misadjusted because someone has you know adjusted the throttle body or something but that is all set up correctly and seems to be working fine so what i think could be the issue i mean it could be lots of various things but we're not going to throw parts at it we're just going to start with the simple things there is an adjustment here on the mass airflow sensor right let me see right there that is supposed to be capped off because you're not supposed to adjust it that has been messed with so someone has touched that to adjust it so that is something that we could uh, try and adjust properly now make sure it is set up correctly because that could mess with it because that will just basically make the whole system a little bit richer a little bit lean which way you put it because it's basically an air bleed which lets some of the air bypass the meter and then you know you get a different sort of reading so i think i'm going to clean up the plugs and we'll put on in these for now uh, i don't have a set of correct plugs for this car I just has some b12 plugs at home um but you know we're not doing extremely nitpicking today we just want to get this rough running out of the way and because it runs extremely smooth when cold i can't say that these are faulty plugs even though they're not the correct ones they're definitely not faulty so the issue is somewhere else but now we know that it is running rich we can clean these up put them back in and try to make some adjustments over here plugs are cleaned off put back in i also just cleaned up a little bit in this throttle body but it was very clean it was just because i mean i was there and then we had to look at this i wanted to see where it was 
adjust the original, it felt like it was really high up. So I counted my turns and turned all the way into the bottom because I know sort of what they're supposed to be set at when you count from the bottom up. Normally, you're in the ballpark somewhere. I mean, if you've messed with this, the ballpark to get it set correctly is three or four turns out from the bottom. And then you need an exhaust gas analyzer and to fully set everything up. However, this was 16 and a half turns out. That is crazy. If you have a look here, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there's a dirt mark from where it was before. And it is, I mean, we're talking three quarters of an inch, an inch down. It's far down. Um, so that is definitely not good. But it's always good to count the old one because we know it ran with the old thing. So we can always set it back to that. But now let's set it to a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. We'll set it to four and uh, let's fire it up and see what happens because that is uh, quite a difference. So far it's been running for about three minutes or so and it's very, very smooth. It's even better than it was cold before. So I think we may be onto something. I mean, cleaning off the plugs has definitely helped, but it's really, really windy here. We have a storm coming in, so I can't do this for much longer because later tonight, I'm not gonna dare open the garage door. But um, it's very, very smooth for an XK engine. Let it warm up a little bit longer and see what happens pretty much warmed up now and it's still nice and smooth and if I put it in gear it does not want to die so I think we solved the issue I mean I still need to tune it and do all of that but I think we found what the issue was just something that was really badly misadjusted I just shut the door the storm's getting pretty bad here so Time to head inside, but we have solved the issue. It's just a badly adjusted sensor for some reason. I don't know why. The screw felt kind of loose, so maybe it has twisted its way out of there, or someone has tried to set the idle, thinking that's where you're supposed to set it. Not really sure. But I'm going to tell the owner that's really good news, and I'm going to ask him if he wants just a complete tune above the car, so we'll put new plugs on it, set the timing, uh, set the mixture correctly and go through all of that and uh, you know, do that if he wants to. But at least now it's not going to die on him at a red light or a stop sign like it did before. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Till next time, I'm Adam. This was Live Up the Classic. I'll see you soon.